What if the driving force behind everything we do wasn't survival, happiness, or even the pursuit of pleasure? What if there's something deeper, something hidden beneath all our desires, goals, and ambitions that compels us to act, create, and compete, and even destroy? This hidden force may just be one of the most profound and most misunderstood concepts in philosophy. It's an idea that's shaped the way we see power, influence, and success, yet it's also been twisted in ways Nietzsche probably never intended. What does it mean to be powerful? Most people think of power as control, control over others, control over resources, control over their environment. We're taught to associate power with wealth, status, political influence, and sometimes even brute strength. But for Nietzsche, power wasn't just about control. It wasn't even just about other people. His idea of power goes much deeper, and it's directly tied to something much more personal, much more internal. Nietzsche wrote, Wherever I found a living thing, there I found the will to power. This statement hints at a much broader understanding of power, a force that drives all life, not just in the political or social realm, but in every living being. But what could Nietzsche have meant by power, if it's not the kind we typically think of? Before we answer that, let's take a moment to think about how we see power in our everyday lives. We see it in our bosses at work, in political leaders, in celebrities whom seem to hold sway over millions of people, and yet, there's something about these forms of power that feels shallow, fleeting. If you've ever felt that pursuing success for its own sake, or chasing recognition and control over others, didn't actually fulfill you, you're tapping into something Nietzsche recognized as well. And that's it in towards what we're about to discover. Nietzsche wasn't interested in power as domination over others, but something far more profound. So let's dig a little deeper. Have you ever wondered why people strive for greatness, even when it's not necessary for survival? Why do some people feel the need to push themselves beyond their limits, to create, to challenge the status quo, or to leave their mark on the world? Why do we as human beings not just want to live, but to thrive, to excel, and to become something more? Nietzsche believed that at the core of human nature is an insatiable drive, not for survival, not for happiness, but for growth, for overcoming, for becoming more than we are. A living thing seeks above all to discharge its strength. Life itself is will to power. Self-preservation is only one of the indirect and most frequent results, he wrote in Beyond Good and Evil. This means that our deepest drives aren't just about staying alive or avoiding discomfort. They're about something far greater. And, as we are going to see, this is the key to understanding Nietzsche's true view on power. Nietzsche didn't just see power as something external, but as something intimately tied to what he called self-overcoming. For example, every time you push yourself to learn something new, to achieve a goal, to conquer a fear, you're not just acting out of a desire for success, you're engaging in what Nietzsche considered the highest form of power, the power to overcome yourself. Nietzsche writes, Man is something that shall be overcome. What have you done to overcome him? This idea of self-overcoming was crucial to Nietzsche's philosophy. For him, the greatest form of power isn't about dominating others, it's about conquering your own limitations. It's about personal growth, self-mastery, and the relentless drive to become something greater than you currently are. So the next time you set a goal, push yourself through a challenge, or strive to improve, you're engaging in Nietzsche's highest form of power, the power to involve and transform yourself. Before we get to the heart of Nietzsche's concept, we need to acknowledge something critical. Nietzsche's ideas, especially this particular one, have been misused, wildly misused throughout history. For some, Nietzsche's ideas about power have been interpreted as a justification for domination, for ruthlessness and for violence. Entire political movements, most notoriously the Nazi regime, misappropriated his philosophy to support their own agendas of conquest and oppression. But Nietzsche never supported these views. In fact, he despised nationalism, anti-Semitism and any form of authoritarianism 
that sought to reduce the individual to a mere tool of the state. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster, he warned in Beyond Good and Evil. This famous quote reminds us of the dangers of becoming consumed by the very forces we try to overcome, and it's a perfect reflection of how Nietzsche's ideas can be distorted when taken out of context. So why is this concept so often misunderstood? Why have so many twisted it to justify their own quest for dominance? This brings us to the key moment. What Nietzsche was really talking about isn't power over others, it's something far more personal, far more profound and far more transformative. Nietzsche's will to power. This is the force he believed drives all living things, not just humans, but life itself. Nietzsche's will to power isn't about conquering others, it's about the drive to grow, to overcome, to assert your own being, and to continually strive towards something greater. The will to power is neither a being nor a becoming, it's a pathos, the most elemental fact from which a becoming and effecting first emerge. The will to power is the inner force that pushes us not just to survive but to thrive, to exceed our limitations, to shape the world and most importantly to shape ourselves. Nietzsche saw this force in everything from the smallest organism to the greatest artist, from the most humble individual to the most ambitious leader. But, as we've seen, it's been dangerously misunderstood as a call for domination and control. So the next time you hear someone refer to Nietzsche's will to power, remember, it's not about control over others, it's about something much deeper. The power to overcome, to transform, and to become more than you are. As Nietzsche famously wrote, He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. If you have a purpose, a reason to strive, the challenges you face won't seem like obstacles, but opportunities to grow. So what's your why? What's driving you? And how can you use the will to power to become the person you're truly meant to be? Let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in learning more about Nietzsche, check out this video.